Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development, and personal grooming. I am here to help your journey to Chap Nirvana that little bit easier. Now, I was shocked just a few days ago when I was reading my newspaper, and I came across a business article which declared that Kiwi boot polish, here it is, Kiwi, was pulling out of the UK shoe polish market for the you know and it came as a, a jolt out of the blue for me really because in all of my life kiwi has been the dominant force when it comes to buying using shoe polish boot polish in the united kingdom uh, although it, when you put some thought into it it doesn't really come as a huge shock you know we're living in a time in which less and less people wear formal shoes and when i look around me as i go through life you know to to see another gentleman wearing a good pair of dress shoes and then with a good shine on it is an extreme rarity. So much so that I have been known to uh, approach a stranger and you know, congratulate them on the fine quality of their footwear or the shine on their shoes. So things are a changing. And it came as a big shock because like I say, you know, since I've been polishing my own shoes, since I was a schoolboy, when I wore black shoes to school every day, um, I've used Kiwi shoe polish. And then as I became an air cadet when I was in my teens, you know, when I learned of the, the miracle of the mirror shine, uh, it was Kiwi polish, which gave me my first ever mirror shine. And then when I transitioned into the military, as I grew into my first professional career, uh, it, I spent many an hour slaving over a pot of Kiwi polishing, polish chasing that elusive glissage that that spit shine on my parade boots and my shoes in general so kiwi has been there all throughout my life so it's a really big shock to learn that i will no longer see it on the supermarkets and on the shelves of you know shoe care shops in the uk now kiwi has got quite a reputation and quite a history behind it as a company it was created in uh, 1906 so 117 or so years ago by a chap called William Ramsey an Australian who set up his boot polish manufacturing company and he named it Kiwi in honor of his wife because his wife was a New Zealander and of course the Kiwi is the national emblem of New Zealand and right to this day the Kiwi or the outline or the silhouette of a Kiwi is visible on a can of Kiwi polish so it's got quite a history behind it and as time progressed kiwi really came to uh, more uh, sort of awareness when it was selected as the boot polish of choice by the british and the united states armies during the first world war and during the second world war and it grew and it grew uh, in fact it is said that kiwi boot polish uh, was fortunate enough to have a two-thirds market share of the global shoe polishing market uh, throughout the whole world and in fact in Malaysia and Singapore the term Kiwi in the Malay language actually means to polish your shoes it has been adopted into the language and if you're going to Kiwi your shoes it means you're going to polish your shoes so it is you know a remarkable achievement for a brand hailing from uh, sort of colonial Australia and it has grown to a product which had market dominance So I guess that's the reason why I was somewhat shocked when I heard the Kiwi were removing themselves for sale in the UK uh, Particularly, you know as they've held such uh, a grip on the market because if you go into a supermarket uh, In that little section of the store where they have you know shoe brushes things like that It's always Kiwi shoe polish, which is the polish of choice there are a few other brands out there of course there are cherry dasco and things like that but it's always kiwi that have the widest range of products uh, and they that'll tend to be the polish that most people go to because it's a name that they're familiar with it's got the heritage the history and the brand recognition behind it but i guess if we look at the way people are dressing particularly over the last 40 years because 
the casualization of men's style has really got into its flow in the last 40 years. As people uh, you know, no longer feel the need to wear a suit to the office every day. It started with a reduction from a suit to maybe a jacket and slacks, uh, and then a shirt and tie, and then no shirt and tie at all, no slacks, people tend to wear jeans. People in the modern world predominantly dress you know, for their comfort rather than the impression that they will make or the impact they will make when they meet clients or things like that. And there's one big aggravating factor really which has changed everything just recently and that's the COVID-19 pandemic. And with it, it's revolution of working from home. It was a, a, a sort of cultural rarity up until that point. A very few number of people worked from home. Today, a couple of years after that pandemic has you know, had its flow, uh, the truth is working from home is increasingly becoming the norm. And most people love the increased work-life balance, not having to spend hours on the train or commuting in a car in traffic. So working from home is this you know, attractive thing. I know I work from home and I haven't worked in an office now for three or four years. And I don't envisage ever going back to an office environment again, as most people don't, if given the opportunity. And of course, when you're working from home, why would you wear a shirt and tie? Why would you wear you know, a blazer and slacks? Because those items of clothing represent more work for you. You have to iron a shirt, you have to iron your slacks, and shoes exactly the same. Why would you wear a pair of dress shoes if you're going to work from home? You're going to dress for comfort. You're going to wear, you know, jogging trousers or sneakers at home because it's more comfortable. Or slippers even, if you don't even dress up into a pair of sneakers. And the day of the dress shoe has very much been in a decline of recent years. And of course, if you can imagine, if, you don't need, if you're not wearing dress shoes, you don't need to polish your dress shoes. And this is the reason why the sales of things like Kiwi have fallen away and we're now seeing it being removed from the marketplace. So it's, if anything, for me, the, the whole uh, Kiwi going away from the marketplace represents for me some sort of uh, a, a bit of social commentary. The fact that it tells us a lot about us as human beings. For the last 100 years, we judged each other on our clothing because it's what we saw. You know, you drink in somebody's appearance with the eyes before you ever get to meet them and discover their personality. And I'm very much part of that impression uh, that you made on somebody was around your shoes because if your shoes have a, a wonderful shine on them or if they're at the very least clean it tells you something about that person and if that person has gone to the extent of having a mirror shine on their footwear well you know they're moving up that ladder of being somebody who's smart presentable maybe somebody that you can employ in a public facing position, maybe good with clients, maybe a good spokesman for your business. There's lots of things which go with a physical appearance when you meet somebody. And shoes are definitely one of the casualties of the reduction of formality in the world that we're seeing today. Now, when it comes to Kiwi, I have to say, I stopped using it quite a few years ago. So for me, it's not such a crushing blow that it would be if it was my sole polish that I used every day. But actually, I moved away from Kiwi oh, five, six, seven, maybe even longer than that years ago when I started to become more interested in shoe care and I was interested in the components, the things that went into the polish. And I realized that Kiwi is a, a petroleum-based product, so it will catch fire if you set fire to it. Uh, and, you know, for me, it was an interesting factor about the way the polish is formulated. All those years ago, I stepped across, and I now almost predominantly use a brand called Safia, which is a French brand which has largely natural components to it. The parts which make up the product are you know, natural waxes and oils, opposed to maybe more man-made uh, materials which you'll find in the Kiwi. So I've largely moved away from it, but there's always one pot of Kiwi polish in my collection. And it's this one I'm holding here. It is the Kiwi Dark Tan. Now this has been in the Kiwi range since 1908. And the reason I love Kiwi Dark Tan, it's not about the polish, it's about the color. Dark Tan has a sort of ready brown color to it, which 
although not unique, there may be other polishes which produce it, manufacturers, um, I have found that dark tan to be absolutely perfect for shoes, well like oxbloods for instance, which have a ready brown appearance. And whilst I'm not you know, a huge fan of the polish itself, the components of this polish, the colour which they've produced in dark tan, I've yet to find anywhere else. And being as Kiwi is so inexpensive, I've always had a pot in my collection for those shoes or boots that just really need that colour refreshing every so often. And I have to say, um, I'm going to make sure I've got a couple of pots of this in my collection in store because I understand uh, many shoe aficionados are already reporting a lack of Kiwi shoe polish on the shelves in the UK. Clearly, the announcement that they're pulling out to the market has come after a period of reduced uh, sales and reduced uh, wholesaling. So there may be far less out there. So if you are in the market for some Kiwi polish, perhaps you want to get yourself a little bit in stock. So what does this tell us really, as we round up here, about the death of the dress shoe? Well, don't worry, all right? The dress shoe is not dying. It is fair to say that many shoe brands, many of the historical and heritage brands are in a tight spot. You know, during the COVID-19 pandemic, some really well-known brands like uh, Barker's, like uh, Look, like Clark's, all made redundancies within their workforce. They downsized their staff simply because they weren't selling the same number of shoes. And I think that will have been endemic across the quality shoe care world and they will have all been pinched all will have you know seen their sales go down and they will increasingly see their sales go down as i see this trend towards casualization continuing you know people are going to be working from home now this is the future unless there's some vast change to the way that you know we have to do our business and that means people will need less dress shoes and this will become more apparent in the years ahead. Because if you've bought a nice pair of dress shoes a couple of years ago, of course they're probably gonna last 10 years. So this knock-on effect of working from home, we will see accelerating. And I expect to see several big name shoe companies, Northamptonshire companies nonetheless, probably snuffing out of existence as the years go ahead. Maybe the less popular ones, or the ones who don't have uh, you know, the more attractive ranges or the more competitive prices. For the intentionally well-dressed man, like you and I, what does, that mean, what does this whole thing mean for us? This cultural shift towards casualization? Well, for me, I don't see it as a bad thing, all right? When I see talk of people increasingly wearing casual shoes, it doesn't worry me because I'm never gonna be one of those guys. I am always going to wear dress shoes, you know, formal footwear. And it just means for me that I will be able to stand out even more in a crowd of other men. Because right now, if I walk into a room and there are 10 men in that room, maybe only three of us will wear dress shoes. I'm normally the only one of those three who's got a mirror shine or a well shine pair of shoes. So I'm already at the top of the pyramid, but I expect, expect that pyramid below me to become even broader now that we're seeing this shift. And you know, the, parade, the Kiwi uh, Pre Gloss, the one I've got here, uh, one of their better products, um, its reduction from the marketplace just emphasizes really the way things are changing. So for us, intentionally well-dressed men, it's good news in a way. It means it's gonna be easier for us to stand out in the crowd because we will be the, one of the few who now uh, stride through life, putting their best foot forward, and on that best foot, is a well-shined dress shoe. So there we go. It's not the end of the world, but it's an interesting chapter of social commentary. Always worth keeping an eye on the business pages in the newspaper to give us an inkling of what's happening within men's style. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion about the death of the dress shoe. It's not dead yet. It's got some time, but it's going to be a tough couple of years, I think, for sure. So if you have enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget, subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. If you've got a comment, a question, or just a, an observation you'd like to make, drop it into that comment section. I'd love to hear it.
If you'd like to practically support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. It's the easiest thing to do. Just go into the show notes below and you'll find the link to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you will also find some podcasts which I drop onto the Buy Me A Coffee page uh, about my life behind the scenes here at The Chaps Guide. So until the next time, take care, look after yourselves, keep those shoes chined. There's no excuse. There's plenty of polish out there and I will see you again very soon.